Have you asked yourself before how the machine could understand your code? So when you write a simple fraction such as this fraction to add two numbers x and y and return z, how the machine could understand this code and run it step by step? Although to we know the machine only could understand zero and ones. Yes, that's what we will do in this video. We will learn how the compiler converts your code from the high-level language to the machine language step by step. So if you don't know me, I'm Hassan Robay. I have a PhD in software engineering and I'm currently I'm working as a senior software engineer in one of the big tech company. And I will get I will teach you step by step how we convert or the compiler convert this code to this code to the machine code. How to convert high-level code to the machine code. So let's get start step by step. So I will I would first start with a very clean environment and first of all thing I will going to add add the simple code. So I will add the method. I have it. I already have a snapshot for everything. So this is the method I want to see how it looks like in the machine language. So if you see, this is a very, very simple method. All what it does, it just get its it return an integer, which as a result, and it do some summation between x and y. It just add them and z and return z. First step the compiler will does, it will convert this code to the machine, uh, to the assembly language. So I will just go here and see, show you how this code will look like in the machine language. Don't worry, I will show you in a few seconds how you do that, how you could get your code and convert it in the machine language. But first, let's do it in high level, then we will show you how we do it step by step. So this, how your code will look like in the machine language. So if you see, I mean, if I just put this one here, uh, this is how it look like exactly your, co your how your code will look like exactly in the machine language. So if you see, uh, let me just change the paint, uh, the paint. So if you see, I have here, I have uh, the the sum methods, the same name. You have it here, and th this code called assembly code. You see, first we add uh, we add the base pointer in the stack. And we put the the uh, stack pointer as a as a new base pointer. Then when we done, we pull back the the base pointer from the stack. The way this works, like whenever you call any functions in assembly, first of all, you need to, first thing you need to save the base pointer for the previous method in the stack then you start as with the new base pointer for the new for the method you are working on then we done when when you done you get back to the same point you were before just think about it like you're going from one place to another place and you want to save your previous point so you always save it in the stack when you finish your work you pull it back and that's exactly what happened in these two and this one and you return you will see this style in every assembly method in every call it just you save the previous status then you call it back so that's a simple second thing as we know the assembly language they don't have they don't pass parameters for the methods how to work in assembly this how this x y and pa get passed well they get passed on registries so first parameter usually saved get saved in the edi or edi yeah and the second parameter is get saved in the asi this is registers and the third parameter gets saved in the EDX, then I think ECX, fourth parameter, and continue. This is, this is how it works. Like before you call a faction in assembly, you save the the parameters, input parameters in the registries. So when the when the faction gets called, it's now how to pull these parameters. So first, so this faction you see it understand the first parameter is saved in, in EDI, it will take it and add it here. You see it added in the the new base pointer minus four is four byte because it's integer, so take four bytes only. There, same thing. This is the second parameter to get moved to the second location. You see base pointer minus four, base pointer minus eight, because when we go on the memory, we go on the opposite side. So this is four, this is four byte from the base. This is eight byte from the base. It's just how we store. So you see, we move here. You move, we use a word move. And the word would mean that we move a 32 bit. So here, when we added the two parameters, the x and and y, in the in the memory locations, now I want to do some process on them. I want to just add them. So to do any process, we need to get these data from memory and put them in the registry to apply a process. So you see here, first of all, I get x. You see 
R, P, R base pointer minus 4 I added in the EAX then R, R base pointer minus 8 I added I, I did the here I did move here I did add that's mean okay I get X then I added Y to X so here what I did I just added Y to X now I have Y and X it's saved in this register okay I have I finished my operations in the registers I move this data from registers back to the memory you see I put them in the R base pointer minus 12 this is the third parameter which is Z see, see how they save the local variables it's depend on the size how much size you want if they if Based on these, all of them integer, all of them by four. So two, the first one minus four, second one minus eight, third one minus twelve, because it's four byte. If the the if the variable length is more than four bytes, it will definitely here you see the offset will change. So now I just okay. I I had some data in memory. I move them from memory to the registers. I apply some math. I return them back to the memory. I'm done. Now, when I'm done, the method who call me it, it knows where the return data will be saved usually the return data it will be saved in, in a EAX okay so you see I pull back the data for that from memory and I put it in EAX then I return then I went back so now the method who call this method will now okay yeah I know the return data will be saved in this register I will read it it's the same way that this method when it gets called it now the parameter where it's saved I will show you in a second how this works so this is a step by step how your code or how a simple code get converted to the machine or the assembly language just remember you see, we here we use R R referring to the 64 bit and E is referring to 32 bit so if you say EAX that's mean you are talking about 32 bit if you say RIX that's mean you are talking about 64 bit it's just how they start now I have this code this is how it looked like in the assembly let's see what the next step so the next step is just there is a table for all these words in the uh, in the processor language so I will show you how these tables look like so if I just go here and I I pull back this table so let's see how what this table mean and how it works on here let me just just put it here and this is here, here we are so what we did here is, is said okay yeah i now understand uh this is the code this is my table but what does this table mean i mean what this what is table for well wait a second i will show what this is table for Looking to this table, you see every every instruction is represented by hexadecimal values. So, what these hexadecimal? For example, when you say first first one is push R A R B P, push R B P is represented in hexadecimal in the assembly guideline by fifty five in hexadecimal like five five. Move if you move a sixty four bit, it represents by forty eight. If you move uh, thirty two bit, it represents by eighty nine. See this is because I'm moving 32 bit is 89 here move how much I move here is 8 B is, is maybe different the size from that one 8 B so this is just how all these comments get translated in them in the machine language every every comment has its own representation for example EDI represented by FC ESI presented by F8 for EAX presented whatever by 45 you see here when they use EAX again they call just 45 then again when you have EAX it's just again 45 this is this is how they just deal with the it's just how they represent these command in them in the machine code now I just okay yeah and I understand how all these command get converted in the hexadecimal I will just do my next step which is just make this as a as a long string so I would do I just add my third one which is this one this is not hard it's very simple if you see I mean I didn't did anything smart here if you see look here to this assembly code and I try to use a different paint different color this one how it look like I mean look through it it's not it's not a big deal here what we're doing is just just make it a long string so I have a 55 here I just have 55 as a long string I don't know if how it look like now but let me just pull it back so I make it clear to you so I have a 55 here as I said this is the 55 then the citrine then I have 48 48 so okay 48 is just sitting continued from here then you continue here then it continue here then continue here 
just consider as a long set triangle, okay? You just adding them, you just convert them from the line to long set triangle, okay? If you see, we end by a, a C3, I have C3, before it was 5D, is 5D and that. So by the end, I will end up with this long set triangle in hexadecimal. Well, again, the machine just only understand, uh, it just understand the machine could only understand the binary. Well, you, you just convert this one from uh, from the, from uh, from hexadecimal to binary. So what I do is just say, okay, yeah, that's not hard. I will just convert this hexadecimal to binary. So I will show you how this one look like in binary. So looking back, this is how the binary look like for this hexa code. I mean, I'm sure you are most, most likely you are familiar with this one. So if you just look to this one, you have first one five, you have one zero, one zero. The second one again is five, is one zero, zero, one zero, one, oh, one zero, one zero. You have four, so four is here, zero, zero, one zero. You have uh, eight, and then you have uh, zero, zero, one, zero. Well, it's just like, this is how it works. Like it's just uh, zero, zero, zero. Eight. I mean, now this one, zero, one, two, four, eight. It's just four bits. So everyone, every single uh, hexadecimal represent by four bit. And this is a long string. This is how it gets sent to the language. So the language will oh, it gets sent to the, the machine, and the machine will understand this. But the question, like I show you now, how I just did my own ex simple example, or how I did it in my own way by using example ready. But how you can do it yourself? I mean, how you pick your own example and how you understand this? Well, there is some website we can try here. So let me show, let me show you. This website, you see, I just write a simple method. You could try any language, I tried C. So for example, this is method to receive X, Y, and Z. So if you see A, you see the color, this is the summation. I mean, let me just add plus Z and show you. It's just a different from the one that we have it. So you see, the first parameter as the input x will be saved edi then esi then edx i told you this is the first one this is x y z i save them in the memory then i pull them from the memory to ax i added the second one i added y to the x i added z to the summation of x y z so because i have three of them now three of them are saved in eax i move it back to the memory i'm done with it then when I'm done with this method, I return it back from the memory to EAX because EAX is expected output where the method called this method will now the output will be saved in this in this register. So I will show you how. If I have a void method, name it main, and this method is just simply have a two parameter, integer uh, A equal 10, integer B equal 15, okay? And I have an uh, integer z equal summation for a and b, okay? If you just think about it this way, I mean, you see, this is the main method. We'll say, we'll wait a second to see how the output will look like because I'm I adding a and b together. Oh, because there is z also. Well, let me say integer c equal 5 and I pass a, b, and c, okay? Let's see how this looks like now in the, in the assembly language. So if you look to the main method, see in every method you do same two process. First you save the uh, the base pointer and the stack, then you make the uh, stack pointer as a new base pointer, then you work. When you finish, you pull back the base pointer and return. Same thing, same thing here, same thing here. So this is just something for the changing the stack, the base pointer for the stack, which just don't care about it. So I have three, first of all, I have to do A, 10, I add B, 15, C, 5. You see, I have add A, and A, I add 10, and B, C, it's, com it's by color, so it's easy. You understand this color is that one, this one, this one is that one. So I added 10 in A, 15 in B, 5 in C. Now I put them in the memory, now I pull them back from the memory. Now I just, see, I put this three in the memory, but now I want to send this three to the method. So to send them first, I should put them in specific registers. This one expect, the first parameter expected to be in EDI, second parameter SESI, third parameter EAX. So for that reason, it pulled the first one from the memory and it put it in EDI. 
it pulled the second parameter for the memory and put it in ESI. It pulled the third parameter of the memory and pull it put it in EDX. Then it called the sum mesh, sum methods. So the sum method it knows, okay, yeah, I know the first parameter in EDI, the second parameter ESI, the third parameter in EXI, EDX. Then I put them in the memory. I pull them back from the memory. I do some add operations. Then I put them in EAX, whatever. Then when I want to return back, I pull the data back to EAX because the one who called me, it expect the data in EAX. You see this guy when it come back, say okay, yeah, you finish call the method. That method done. I know the result to be saved in EAX. I will get it from EAX and I put it in this in this variable, which is Z here, and I'm done. So see how the method call work in assembly. Well, whenever you want to call any methods, any method, first of all, you want to put the data in a specific registry, and that method will now is like which is registry you are passing the parameters and when done it returned in EAX so always remember the data returned in EAX and remember how the data gets sent as a parameters so this is how the method look like in assembly let's just make take only one example which is this one this is how it look like in assembly let me use another website to convert it to the to the table so I will just use this website I will just convert so see this is my code the e the three parameter x y z this is how it look like an hexadecimal this is how the table look like i just showed to you a few seconds ago like 1255 represented push whatever for this one this line will represent this this line represent this that's the, i mean you when you work on the memory you see people like injecting data like this in the memory and they do memory injection to execute to execute some code in the memory i mean now you, i think you know you understand what this code mean if you look to it this code it just it's just a sequence of assemble instruction, which is by the end end up as a specific code to run. Now I have this hexa. I will just send it to the different method call, hopefully this one, and I just run it. I will get it how it look like in assembly or in binary. So you so this is how it look like. So when, whenever you want to do some test in the memory and try to store some information in the memory and execute some code in the memory, just write your code in your own language. Convert it to assembly, get it from the assembly, convert it to the hexadecimal, and just save it in the memory location. Just allocate a memory for your code, then invoke that code. Now you are doing some injection. So I hope this video was good enough. So if you like this video, please smash like button and uh, do subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you next.